Hello YouTube and hello 9th Age community. This is Charles with Irishid Gaming and I have another 9th Age battle report. This is game 4 Buckeye Battles. Uh, I got to play against an amazing opponent, Mr. Andrew Ratman. Uh, great guy from uh, Michigan actually. Um, tested out a list against his list a couple times and uh, it proved quite difficult so I was pretty nervous going to this battle. You know this was day 2 Sunday morning. So let's just get right into it. Quick shot of my list here, and uh, I know mine's in text. I am about to scroll through Andrews, so I'm really sorry about that, but that's just kind of how I'm going to do it for right now. Looking at Mr. Ratman's list, he has a duke. He's riding on a hippogriff. He's the general. He's got the Divine Judgment Lance upgrade, I believe. Yep, Lance Enchantment. He's got the Crusader Salvation. So he's got a one-up armor, or no, I think he has a two-up armor save. And then he has the Dragonfire Gem and the Virtue of Might. So this guy is just really, really gross. He just comes in, a lot of attacks, a lot of strength. Uh, he doesn't have the Potion of Swiftness, you know, Potion of Agility. So my Night Commander is actually not a terrible... Uh, uh, you know, fight against him. I mean, if I can go first, I have a chance of killing him. Because uh, he would only get like a 6-up Aegis against me. Because I believe he's got the Questing Oath too. Yeah, so... But if I don't kill him, you know, he'll definitely kill me with all his uh, attacks. And the Hippogriff is pretty nasty too. Then he's got a Castellan with the Legion Banner. Another Castellan with the Legion Banner. Nice... Cheap. Those guys are incredible. They got spears. They have, uh, you know, they get to stand behind. They're really cool, actually, for what they do. I love how they their banners. Like they had so much combat res. It's incredible. Then he has a damsel master with the crystal of the valiant charge, which is very cool. And uh, she's on a horse. He has another damsel master. And the two lores he brought were Druidism and Divination. So he has two masters. He's rocking the double masters. Lots of magic. He has 12 Knights of the Realm with the banner last charge. Those guys are a really solid unit. And then he has a big unit of Peasant Levy. 43 Peasant Levy. And man, these guys are actually pretty difficult to deal with. Um, when they get the two castlins in there, they just have so much combat res. Wait till I mean, wait to see what else he's got on the list. Um, but I don't even. Yeah, they're just light armor and shields too. They're just a great scoring unit, honestly. Like big unit to chew through. Like it's just gonna take you forever to get rid of them. They're really good at what they do. He has one more unit of knights aspirant in his core. Then he has eight grail knights with the flaming standard. Uh, I think he was pretty nervous going into this tournament. I mean, we talked about this list too when we played before the tournament. He was really nervous about uh, going against blot flies before they got a lot worse, um, or or before they were when they were a lot better. Um, and I believe that's why he wanted to take the flame extender. Which I mean, a flame extender is not a bad thing to take. It's just definitely has its uses. Um, two things of five human outriders for chaff, and then a sacred reliquary that goes in the uh, big block of peasants. So you have that thing in there. You have all those castlins. Really good at what it does. And two scorpions, which don't even get me started on scorpions. I they are so good, honestly. Like they frustrate me so much. Like when I look at my cannon and I look at a scorpion, I ugh, to me. There's like no comparison, honestly, but some people will think that there is. I won't name those people, but um, yeah, I think scorpions are pretty amazing. So yeah, that's Andrew Ratman's Kingdom of Ectane Army. Deciding what everything was, so we had to, we kind of had to, to talk it amongst ourselves. So in the middle, um, we left it just as a wall. I know there's, there's kind of like that the old kind of chaos symbol on the board, but we decided not really to... Um, get anything wild with that since the objective was spoils of war and um, the deployment was counter thrust so we wanted to and one of the objectives was basically going right underneath that wall so we're like let's just have it as a wall that kind of makes it easier for the both of us uh, there's two hills there's one hill behind his box two forests and then a water feature so uh, we picked table sides and um, 
I actually have the table side where my models are. Here are the magic spells I took this game. So for my magical heirloom, I took Quicksilver Lash. And then from Cosmology, my master took Altered Sight, Touch of the Heart, Perception of Strength, and Unity and Divergence. And then for my opponent, his Druidism Master took Entwining Roots, Summer Growth, Healing Waters, and Stone Skin. So all really good spells. And then from Divination, he took Stars, or his other damsel took Stars Align, Unerring Strike, Scrying, and Portent of Doom. Which, you know, is an interesting spell, which actually this is the old spell card, but I just kind of took it because I wanted to highlight this spell. Because um, now the spell is, you know, for each character in the unit, you have like a minus one to your combat res. And it's a permanent spell. Oh my goodness. So I was really scared about that spell this game. Uh, just for the simple fact that if he casts it on my night block with all my characters in it, I'm automatically suffering minus four to combat res. And I'll show you when we start getting to deployment, I'll show you where that really got me nervous. So this is um, kind of the starting deployment. Um, I believe the first thing that I put down were my two riders. Um, and it was kind of thrust and I got to start first. Or, or maybe my opponent got to pick table sides and he took that side and I got to start deploying first. Um, because I put my two riders down. And he put a rider over there. Or I put one rider down. He put a rider over there. I put one more in the middle. It's a little bit clearer without all those models. Uh, he put his big pleasant, uh, pleasant peasant block down um, in front of me. And then I put my one more unit of Knights of Sun Griffin on this side of the board. He put one more thing of his human outriders down. And I ran out of chaff, so, and it was kind of thrust, so I just put everything else down. So I have, you know, my Knights of Sun Griffin on the flanks, kind of protecting me. Uh, I put my steam tank in the middle, uh, or, I mean, actually really towards one side. Uh, I'm not really sure where he was going to put his, his Griffin character. He was pretty concerned about the cannon, because it can one-shot a guy. And I think our last game, my steam tank did one-shot his Pegasus, or his Hippogriff guy. Which, honestly, was just shocking to me. <laughs> As somebody who uses a cannon, it was shocking to see a cannon kill something in one shot. And for some reason, it only happens against KOE Hippogriff Lords. Those guys are randomly vulnerable to the one shot. So, uh, Steam Tank goes down on that side, and then I put my big block of or knights in the middle. I put my Light Infantry crossbows next to them so they can receive their order. And then I just wanted to kind of keep my riders close because I really was not sure where I wanted them to go at this moment. And this is how my opponent deploys the rest of his army. So he does put his Hippogriff uh, Lord behind uh, the hill so the can can't shoot him turn one because I, I dropped and just said I wanted to go first. He puts his banner to the last charge on the right flank there. He puts his grails with both his damsels on the hill. And then he puts his one unit of nine aspirants um, um, kind of on the other side of the grail knights. And he puts both of his scorpions kind of like one on each side. So one's on the hill and then one is kind of hiding behind these trees right here. I vanguard my riders into this water feature. Uh, I'm going to plan on maybe uh, targeting his UMNR riders the first turn, see if I can get rid of his chaff. And then I vanguard my other unit of riders um, forward right here. Um, they're not in the forest, and I made sure that I can kind of get behind his outriders so I can just take care of that bolt thrower early on and uh, just really just kind of get rid of it so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so, because those things are really good at working on my steam tank. So, uh, Empire Sans Cell turn one. The, uh, you know, that's what I do with my, uh, <clears throat> that's what I do with my, um, riders on the top, up the, there you can see they move up so they can shoot at the bolt thrower and then possibly charge the next turn. I do move my Knights of Sun Griffin up because I'm, you know, I'm not too worried about, um, really getting chaffed, um, 
and charge. I, I mean, I'd rather charge his knights, but I think, you know, just because I have all those strength 5 AP3 attacks, I think I have a decent chance of even soaking up a charge, possibly. Um, the steam tank, I don't even think it really moves all that much. It has a shot. You know, I'm not really sure where I want to go exactly yet. I, I kind of have to stay a little bit back with that thing. I don't want to move up and then give him an easy charge with his hippogriff because if he gets in there with his hippogriff he'll probably kill me in one round of combat and then i just move my magic up within 24 inches just to start you know slinging quick silver lash and touch of the heart and just trying to just start doing some damage really and turn one i get flux card eight which is incredible and that leaves me with lots of dice so 10 dice, save one Veil token. I do Crooks over Lash, um, but I believe my opponent... Uh, oh no, I kill a, I kill a Grail Knight. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I thought he was going to... I think I thought he might have stopped it, but that might have been the one he let go. And um, I think that I did a Unity Divergence, and I killed um, some guys here. Either I killed them with Unity Divergence, or that might actually be my crossbow shooting right here. Um, my Riders shoot here. They kill three um, Yeoman, and then they panic them which is really nice and they um they fall back but not too far and then i actually shot um his human outriders that's right and i kill all but one and he doesn't panic so um i feel like the wrong unit panicked because <laughs> it would have been nicer to see this guy go so that i could um so that i could uh bring my um yeah so i don't really want to have to worry about getting chaffed that was a little bit of a bummer, but that happens. Uh, he was going to pass one of those discipline tests. And uh, that's really the end of Empire turn Empire Sansal turn one, going into KOE turn one. Uh, he moves his peasant block up um, because he's kind of not really too worried about getting into combat with my big block of knights. Um, it's so many peasants, and it's just a lot to grind through. And, you know, I just, yeah, I can't really grind through them all in one round. He does chaff up my Knights of Sun Griffin up there in the top left corner, you can see. And he just turns his uh, little unit Knight Aspirant to, to kind of face. He brings his KUE Lord over to the right, which I thought was kind of interesting. I, I think he just wanted to keep the distance as far as possible between the steam tank. And he moves his um, uh, Grail Knight's kind of on the hill, off the hill, but over just a little bit. He gets flux card two, or sorry, flux card three. Um, not really sure what that nine is representing. Oh, the Oaken Throne, yeah. Uh, he gets a nine on the Oaken Throne, I let that go. Uh, he gets a 20 roots on my steam tank to nerf the shooting. And uh, that's it. Going into the first uh, uh, shooting phase for KOE, this bolt thrower hits wounds and does three wounds through Knight Starring Griffin, so that was pretty rough. That makes that combat with the Aspirants um, a lot harder, honestly. And then he hits wounds and does three wounds over here and just kills two Knight Starring Griffin. The only saving grace is they both pass their panic checks. So I guess, you know, if he's going to kill them, then I pass my panic checks. That's not too bad. Uh, Empire Sansal turn two. I charge the chaff and I charge the bolt thrower. And as you can see, the human on the right next to the big unit knights of the banner last charge, they did rally. And then otherwise, I, I just kind of start moving my knights back uh, because, you know, I'm like, I just, I'm not really ready to engage that peasant block and kind of get rid of it. Uh, and even if I do, you know, he's got his lord right there. He's got his, uh, he's got his knights right there. That's just not a good fight. I do start moving my steam tank up, and I think I am just able to get it in range to shoot his, uh, his hippogriff boy. I got flux card two, so a lot less dice this time. I try and get an altered sight off on these guys, and oh, sorry, I kind of flipped through a lot of things right there, and I. I do get it off, and then in the shooting phase, I'm able to kill four of his um, Banner Last Charge Knights, so I thought that was really good. That was pretty useful. 
And then I also get a Unity Divergence off. And uh, as you can see, I, I took out like a nice big chunk towards the rear. Uh, the, uh, the Scorpion dies to the riders, and they go off the board. And the uh, nice Sun Griffin easily dispatched that one human. And then starting up, uh, it started KOE turn two. He actually tries to make this long charge here. He's pretty confident that if he just ties me up, that unit will just sit there. And I actually agreed with him. That's why I backed up. Um, and I think he needed a 10, and he did not get it. So I felt really fortunate. I was able to stand and shoot against him, um, and I picked a few more off. But he was willing to risk it to, to tie up my knights. Because, um, you know, and I agreed with him. If he tied up my knights, he could just bring up his griffin lord. He could just bring up his, you know, his uh, his questing knight or his, his grail knights. And, you know, whenever I finally finish grinding through them, he can just come in and finish off my knights. So that was pretty scary. Uh, and he does charge my knights to sun griffin over here with his knight's aspirant. And uh, this was... This is incredible. So going into the magic phase of KOE turn two, he throws three dice at Portna Doom. And at first I'm like, ah, okay, three fives. That's a great roll. Probably going to have to let that go. It's also a uh, miscast. So what is the result? Well, he threw three dice, which is a minus one because it's under three. But then he rolled flux card one, or he picked up flux card one, which is a plus one. So at first I wanted to let it go because I'm thinking like, okay, it's Amnesia, he'll forget the spell, I'll never have to deal with it again, I'll just have it, I'll have one instance of it on me, and like, I'll just have to deal with that. No, he <laughs> he's just going to suffer the two hits that wound. Um, so I, I think I still ended up letting it go, but it was kind of, it was like, it was one of those funny things where it was kind of frustrating to see that. Uh, but that was the only spell he got off that round. And then going into combat, he kind of rolls really poorly going in with his aspirants they only do one wound um i do two wounds back so it's a push and that's all i need because now i should just be able to grind through them and then on my turn three i decided i wanted to kind of just go for it i knew it was kind of risky but if i could do some damage here reduce this unit down um i was just gonna kind of have to keep sitting back and being pushed back with my knights of sun griffin i decided to try and go for it on the off chance that something happens and, uh, you know, I maybe can kill these guys. Because they do suffer my fear since they're, I think, Knights of the Realm. Uh, as you can see, he's brought up his, uh, or actually, sorry, I brought up my riders with the repeater guns. Uh, I put them in a way so that I'm 12 inches from both his Griffin Lord and 12 inches from his right, or his human outriders. And then I can see his scorpion. So I kind of wanted to leave my options open to... I, I was kind of thinking, like, let me get rid of the scorpions, this, or let me get rid of the outriders, and then let me charge the scorpion next turn. That was kind of the, the idea. Because just getting rid of the scorpion would be nice. It puts a lot of pressure off my wizard and my steam tank. And getting rid of the chaff would be equally nice because it, it'll you know make him harder for him to, to do anything later on. Um, my riders you know come back on the board and they start moving towards the center. My uh, my knights back up again. They just you know they, they take their their three and or yeah their three and a half inches or four inches back, and uh, yeah they just just keep putting distance between them and the big block um, because they just don't want to deal with that. I get flux card three, and I get another unit divergence off, and I kill a nice, nice handful again. My opponent, this unit just looks great. I actually really appreciate my opponent's entire army. I think he just recently kind of acquired all this and put it together, and it's really, really, it just looks great on the field. I think it's all from Fireforge Games. Really good looking um, army. And then this happens. <laughs> So in the shooting phase, I shoot my cannon at the Hippogriff guy. I can just kind of get a shot on him. I hit. I wound. He fails his Aegis save. 
and then I proceed to roll two dice cocked, and they're one showed a six, re-roll it. One sh- the next roll showed a five cocked, re-roll it. I get and the next one, I get a three. So I do three wounds to his hippogriff guy, which made my opponent incredibly nervous. Um, and then we all felt really tense for um, a good minute as I was trying to roll out a dice. Um, but I do do three wounds, which is pretty excellent. And then that actually makes me decide to want to shoot my riders at him for the hope of possibly doing a wound. I don't do it. I should have shot his, his chaff. That would have been the smart play. Um, my crossbows, they've basically been working on the big unit of peasants, uh, since, you know, the Grail Knights are going to be a lot harder to kill. Um, I decide the peasants seem like a good, good place to put the, put the bolts into. And then this combat, I I only kill one, he kills one, I I think it, or actually, yeah, I think he does a wound, I think it ended up being a push. So, uh, we just stick there. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even think I got to cause a panic or cause a, a break test, unfortunately. So he brings his his uh, Griffin Lord in just to, to free this unit up, because otherwise I could sit there and grind against him for a long time. And then he decides to bring his Grail Knights into my steam tank, and I was a little bit nervous about this, but at the same time, but only because in the la- the last game I played, my steam tank got exploded in one round, and I my wizard is so close. But at the same time, I'm thinking. Steam Tank's pretty good at surviving sometimes. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can just sit there for a long time. And he finally, he does uh, bring up his peasants and put them on the wall and pick up the marker in the middle. So he does kind of have the objective. Um, as you can see though, my Knights of Sun Griffin on the left there, they got they ended up finishing off the rest of his Knight's Aspirant. So now I possibly have the option to start going after the marker on the left there. Flux card four from my opponent's magic phase. He puts up scrying on his knights here. This puts the discipline on him too. And then I'm not really sure what this picture is showing. Oh, his scorpion shot. Yeah, you can just see the wound markers on the back of my wizard. Yeah, scorpion shot hit my wizard and I think it put three wounds on him, which made me really nervous uh the yeah the hippogriff guy has no problem getting rid of um uh just he just he just destroys the knights of sun griffin he does what he does best in combat and uh oh this is this okay so now we're going to emperor sun stall turn four i want to say and I'll correct that later if it's not turn four, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this is turn four. And I have, you know, so the knights, the Grail Knights went into the steam tank. I think they only did one wound. They just, just did not hit and roll and wound very well. I made good armor saves. I think I killed two maybe. And I have this nice juicy flank here with my knights into the his flank of his knights. And I fail it. So I was really bummed about that. I think it was like a 15 inch or 16 inch charge it was not very far at all so i fail i go for a little bit and now i might have to deal with these peasants getting in yep and this is what the rest of the board looks like so i i think i decided just to i think i decided just to charge his human outriders with my outriders um i thought it looks like i did that's kind of interesting I don't know why I would have done that. I mean, I could have just shot at them, too. Huh. Nah, that's what it looks like I did. I don't know why. I could have just shot at them. <laughs> but I decided to just go into combat and take them out there. And I moved my Wizard Master back behind my steam tank. Make it harder for his uh, his bolt thrower to hit me. Keep, keep giving it distracting, because that kind of just helps generally against, you know, the Grail Knights. And yeah, um, just gonna just try, try and do as much damage as those peasants, so there's very few of them to go into combat against me, and maybe heal back some wounds on my wizard. So uh, I get flux card six, 
And I'm able to do just that, so I'm able to take one wound. I, t I think he put four wounds on me, because I know after my touch of the heart, I have three wounds on. So I, I think he, I think he put, <laughs> I think he put four wounds on me with that, with that scorpion. And I'm also able to get a perception of strength off on the steam tank, so that's really nice. Now I got strength six grinds. So that's pretty good. Um, in combat, I, I, th I think it looks like I might kill like another one or two, so that's that's okay. Working on them. Uh, and then shooting, this was a good round of shooting. I really start bringing down that peasants. At this point, I think it's less than 10 peasants, the Grail Reliquy, and the um, and the Castellans. So that was great. My my riders helped out too with their brace of pistols. And they attempt to charge again. And this time, it was probably only like a, like a 10 or 11 inch charge. And he fails it again, unfortunately, with his infantry unit. So, um, and then, so the riders went in, they were victorious, and they, they somehow killed those two guys in combat. I don't know how I thought that would happen. And his Baron of the Last Unit decides to charge them to get rid of them. I stand and shoot, and I kill four more. Oh my gosh. Really good roll. Um, it was short range, so it was just the penalty from standing and shooting, and that was, that was really good. Yeah, that was really hot. So three guys go in, and that will be enough to get rid of them. So my opponent gets flux card two, and um, I'm not really sure what he gets off in the magic phase. I think he try. I think he he either tried to do an. I think he might have done another port of doing on, on my unit this turn. Which would make, I think, yeah, I think he did do that. So I'm actually up to minus eight combat rest with my knights. So at this point, my knights don't even really want to fight anything, unfortunately. Um, because they're just going to be so bad. Um, which, I mean, it, it, some things they could probably kill enough to negate that. But at the same time, minus eight combat rest is just scary. So, um, and he does get the Oaken thrown off. And then, yeah, the the riders get really kind of willed down. Just one guy's left, and they, um, I think they don't pursue him, and he gets over here. And then, this was interesting, um, the Grail Knights finally just break from combat rise. I think I just kill one or two more. Um, they didn't really have any divination magic on them, and they just kind of peel away. Can't chase them, though. Um, but it is, um, and that was his turn, so this is my turn five. And I try to charge my peasants with the knights, because now I'm thinking, like, okay, I can probably get rid of them finally. And um, they just flee. So I move my steam tank up to threaten the... Or I move my steam tank up. Uh, I think I just went... I think I went 5d3 in an attempt to get them. Um, just to, you know, because I could just wrap up all those points right then and there, and I did not make it, unfortunately. Um, so I'm a few inches away. But I want to say it was a 5d3 move, so I don't have a cannon shot this turn. And my one rider keeps fleeing. And we just kind of surround him, and we're just going to try and shoot the rest of them. I think at this point we have decided that this turn 5 will be the last turn we play, because we were running out of time. Um... The biggest thing uh, kind of going on is I did manage to pick up one marker. You can see there on the left side of the board, my Knights of Sun Griffin came over, grabbed a marker, and they kind of started peeling away with the booty. Um, I get a touch of the heart, and I kill one of the Grail Knights. And then with all my shooting, I'm able to just get rid of both the Wizards, and I think I reduce the Peasant Unit to just the two Castellans, and the Grail Reliquy. So I get all the points for the Peasants. And this is what it's looking like at the end of Empire Sun Cell turn 5. So at this point, he doesn't have a marker. He's got his, his Hippogriff guy on one wound, giving up half points. And he's got his, his, his Peasants are fleeing. And he's got the three Knights from the big Banner unit. And they're also giving up half points because there's 12 models in there. So at this point, I was, I was actually... Feet doing very well, um, but I was feeling really nervous before this. Oh, sorry. 
And uh, the last, my opponent's uh, last move, he decides to, I still have two Portent of Dooms up on my Knight unit, so he decides to kind of just go in there and see what he can do. He, he did decide to charge his banner the last charge knights in there. I don't think that was a great idea. I think he was kind of hoping to maybe either challenge the Sonstall guy or um, or maybe that I might challenge his Hippogriff guy. Um, but he, basically what ends up happening is uh, my, knights, my, my, my knight commander with his lightest Sonstall kills his banner the last charge bros. Um, his Hippogriff guy goes to town, kills five knights. Um, I'm steadfast on a, a 9, and I pass it. <laughs> and that's where the game ends. Now that's my last picture, too. So this game ends up being a 20-0 victory for the Empire Sonstall. Uh, I was pretty surprised uh, the way the game kind of wrapped up. It wrapped up really quick. Uh, I wish we could have got one more turn. I'm not sure... How much of a difference it would have made? Um, I think I would have just uh, continued collecting more points. Um, at least I think it went to only five turns. I'll I'll probably have to double check that as I'm editing the report. So I just want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank my opponent Andrew Ratman, and I want to say I'm sorry. I know I kind of really pushed us there at the end uh, to kind of wrap up very fast. Sorry, Brian Amberm as well when I kind of pushed you away right there. You're a great guy, and I love you. Uh, but thank you everybody for watching, enjoy this battle report, and uh, we'll see you soon with another one. Hey.